Good afternoon, uh, students and friends. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to the organizers, IES and uh, Prem Jain Memorial Trust for inviting me to this talk. I'm deeply honored and humbled by this uh, invitation. I hope I can share something of value to the students here, to the audience here. So I'm going to talk about uh, sustainability from activism to action. It's my journey of uh, over 25 years uh, that I'm going to share with you. So uh, activism was not just one starting point. Uh, journalism, activism, you can say, then academician, then academician, scientist, and researcher for, for a very long time, almost 15 years. And then finally, now I'm a practitioner for the last five years. So that's been my uh, journey. Um, I would say activism, probably most people uh, don't know about. Uh, it's about protecting or uh, say giving a voice to those who do not have a voice. So uh, we wrote, we spoke, uh, we uh, you know did things for environment, for people, for uh, pollution of rivers. So this was where my starting point was. And it all started with my mentor. Uh, I had a mentor, Dr. Rashmi Mayur, uh, who uh, was a very well-known uh, environmentalist, uh, internationally well-known. Uh, and he was invited to India way back in the 1970s by the then Prime Minister uh, Indira Gandhi. And uh, you know he was called as a doomsday professor. Uh, because he predicted, being a futurologist, he predicted many things like um, uh, what, uh, what kind of future are, are we going to have. And many of the things that he said way back about climate change, about sea level rise, about uh, our cities, everything practically has come true. Anyway, for me, uh, when I joined this institution way back in 1998, uh, it was uh, a whirlwind path over five years where I learned everything that I had to learn about environment. Uh, here, you know, I started as a researcher and then um, a, uh, the, and I ended up as the head of the Sustainable Development Program because this organization was uh, working in the United Nations. Uh, the partner organization was Global Futures Network in New York. And uh, I headed this whole program, and uh, it allowed me a lot of learning. So my job involved uh, reading, writing, researching. I did a lot of editing. I was editor of uh, assistant editor of two two magazines at that time, uh, working internationally. Uh, so all of this was such a great experience. I think that I did my PhD then, then later on when I actually did my PhD, because. Uh, uh, it was everything. Like uh, we worked at the grassroots level, and we also worked with the you know policy makers, with the corporates, with the government level, and so on. So Dr. Rashmi Mayur uh, was a person who worked at the highest levels. He was known to most of the uh, heads of nations, but he also was down there working with the slum dwellers, working with the villagers. So that is how I got my perspective on environment and on sustainability. And uh, among the various things uh, as an output that came out in those five years that I was there, uh, the, uh, we published actually three books in which I contributed immensely to the research part, which is Millennium, Learning for the New Millennium, and Pedagogy of the Earth, uh, which uh, you know came out uh, b before, all of them came out before 2000. And then much later, I uh, published a book called Survival at Stake, which was uh, uh, inaugurated by the um, uh, mayor of Ahmedabad. Uh, called, it was dedicated to my mentor, Dr. Rashmi Mayur. And it's an anthology. It's actually a collection of all his essays, his articles, his poems, which were unwritten, unpublished. So we decided to put it all together, and we published it. So uh, that, was, uh, that was the part about uh, my IISF journey. 
But uh, one of the things that I really learned being there was that uh, environment cannot be seen in a vacuum. You have, uh, you have to consider people. You have to consider their socio-economic aspects as well. You know, it's not just protection of nature, pure uh, and natural rivers, and uh, stopping the pollution, etc. You also have to look at people. They are intrinsically related to the environment, and people can make a change to the environment. This is very important. This is what I learned uh, when I was there, apart from a lot of things. And one of the most important things was my exposure to the world. I think that don't miss any opportunity of meeting great people. I had the opportunity, you know, of meeting, say, the vice president of uh, Taiwan at that time, or many, many Nobel laureates, or, you know, people who were at the top of the world, environmental scientists, uh, you know, architects, and so on. So many people I met around the world. And, uh, you know, meeting these people was like, uh, was like uh, reading a hundred books because you observe how they, how they are so simple, first of all. You know, you observe how they uh, interact, what are their values, uh, how much they, uh, how much they are self-disciplined, a lot of things you can learn by meeting the right kinds of people. So uh, I think that my journey, you know, uh, meeting uh, these very great people was one of the, was one of the great things which developed a global perspective on the environment. These were people, you know, who, uh, who were leaders, you know, who had a vision about the planet, whether it was to develop systems, whether it was developing uh, science, whether it was governance, they had a vision of how the planet should be made sustainable. And being with them, interviewing them sometimes, and also learning from them was a great, great aspect. I think that everybody should never miss an opportunity to work with people, even if it means no cost, uh, in terms of money or anything like that. And then uh, around 2003, I changed my track once again, uh, got back to India actually, was a lot, uh, roaming around the world actually for, for those five years. Uh, and I came back to India, I was invited to head a uh, postgraduate department of environmental architecture at Rachana Sansal by uh, the visionary uh, leader of Rachana Sansal, the founder, Professor Vandarekar. And uh, this was a very different uh, ball game altogether from what I had done. Uh, for the first time, I had to think about you know, how to design curriculum, how to develop syllabi, how to make people think in the right direction. So we had to, so we started with two courses. First, we started with the postgraduate diploma, and then we went on to the master's degree in environmental architecture. Probably it was one of the first courses, and in that it was really popular uh, till the time it ended in 2017. Uh, but uh, we really had to think about so many things. We, first of all, we learned that environment has a multidisciplinary approach. It has so many specializations. You cannot just focus on one aspect. You have to uh, give exposure to all aspects. And then we you know, went on to think about uh, problem-based learning. This is how we changed our structure of, the, uh, of teaching. And then slowly and slowly, we moved on to experiential learning. We focused a lot on uh, you know, being on the side, uh, doing things on the side, doing things uh, hands-on, and so on and so forth. So you can see all these pictures are pictures of our team working with the government. Wherever possible, we had such interactions. And then uh, you know, we were also awarded by the UNDP Jeff in 2015 for this effort uh, as you know, uh, building capacity building in Maharashtra. Uh, so that is one of the things we achieved. We also got the opportunity of doing various projects like the Dahisa River Restoration Project, the Ecotourism Project in Savantwari. These were all projects with either government organizations, with local NGOs, with municipalities. Two of the great uh, projects that I can mention is a roadmap for uh, energy conservation building code implementation in Maharashtra, which I did from 2013 to 2015, and the great opportunity of, uh, of working on the master planning for village tourism in Sundudur district in Maharashtra. So these were some of the great projects. In, this was the ECBC implementation. We practically went to 15 different districts of Maharashtra and you know met so many stakeholders, developed the whole process. It was very 
very, very interesting, and especially working with the government. For the first time, I learned that uh, you know, in the government, we have really sincere people who can you know ch have the you know potential to change a lot of things. And uh, also the ecotourism project that we did in Sindhudurg was also a great uh, opportunity for the students as well. We had 33 students working on this project divided into five districts and so on and so forth. Uh, then we did this uh, project called Small is Beautiful, a project that was curated by me along with uh, three other uh, professionals from the Bezalel Academy of Arts and Design in Israel. Uh, it was a small program that we developed and it went on for four years uh, as one of the projects which uh, dealt with the behavioral aspect of environment. And uh, it was quite successful. We had about 200 odd people who graduated or who uh, went through this whole process over four years in different parts uh, of India as well as Israel. Uh, small is beautiful, uh, a study of design as if people mattered. That was the topic of this uh, of this series. And in all of this, I want to say that uh, one of the most important things for me was the research and the learning. What I didn't know, I wanted to learn and I do wanted to do more. So uh, two of the good, I mean, big projects that we did during this time was the uh, developing energy efficient and ECVC compliant opaque wall assembly uh, for the uh, Department of Science and Technology, which was, you know, ran over five years. We did work with various industry professionals, got a lot of uh, new ideas and developed it to a tier 8 level uh, product. And then we had, uh, we did a lot of work on sustainable building materials and indoor air quality as well. I just want to have a very small story here. I hope I'm not running out of time. Uh, so, uh, you know, one of the things I want to tell about research is that uh, I was told once that there is a building uh, a colleague of mine, a very senior colleague of mine has designed and that this building in Nashik is ground plus two story and that uh, it has no air conditioning and uh, it has been designed using structural cooling system. So when I heard this I said, okay, let me really go and verify this and at that time I had a lot of instrumentation with me. I took up two of my senior colleagues with me who came very happily <laughs> with me and uh, this is Dr. Joshi and Dr. Bhat Nagar, my dissertation guide and we over the next couple of days we wired up the whole building and we studied it intensely we enjoyed doing this whole process uh, because we were we were keen to learn what is this building really working the way it should and then uh, uh, we got the results which was really perplexing because for the first time I learned that this building is literally working as a carbon neutral building so I put it into a paper and I published it uh, which was you know later on I published it at the PLIA, which is one of the largest conferences on passive uh, and low energy architecture in the world. And then I got the best paper award. That was like the star of, uh, you know, I could never imagine. Because PLIA is attended by uh, the uh, who's who of passive design. And to get a kind of uh, award from them was, uh, was a truly great and gratifying experience. But what I want to tell you guys is that... Um, uh, is, if you want to do research, if you want to learn, the most important thing is to have an open mind and a, and a curiosity. That's all you need and follow the rigors of scientific research and you will get that. So, uh, you know, it's just f uh, amazing how just a journey with uh, enjoyment and fun led to something like this. Um, and uh, then I'm now, this is my current practice. Uh, last five years only I've actually started into practice. And uh, at uh, RUA Eco Spaces, we do a lot of things including uh, green building, green audit, energy audit, green interiors. We also do training and capacity building. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we, we believe that we can reduce the impact of build spaces and conserve the environment. It was very clear when I started practice that I want to do something that is uh, environmental architecture. I don't want to increase the impact of uh, the on the environment by any of my structures. So this clarity of thought I had. And uh, lastly, I would like to 
just conclude by saying that through all these roles that I played, the, the, common, the most common thing for me was my uh, interest in nature, in environment, and in sustainability. Uh, there is a very interesting book by Tim Tanashiro called uh, How to Ikigai. I, I'm sure you all know what is Ikigai, but it is about four questions, what you love, what you are good at, what you can get paid for, and what the world needs. All this will define your passion, your profession, your vocation, and everything. So all you need to do is to follow your path, follow your interests, follow what is at the core of what you are. And that's, that's where your journey will lead you. So I would like to uh, end this. For me, that Ikigai was sustainability, was environment, and still is. And it will keep on being there. Uh, the good thing about practice is that you can keep on questioning. You can keep on reinventing yourself every day, every, you know, keep on doing it. And so uh, that's the great thing about this last part of uh, practice. And I would like to end with a quote from my mentor. Dr. Rashmi Mayur, who said, our hope is that people realize that they are part of a large ecosystem of the earth, that is nature, on which we are dependent. And if you want to protect the evolution of the earth, we must learn to become humble, modest, and dedicate every day of our life to the protection of the earth before it becomes too late. And I would like to thank you all. Thank you.